editor that we're going to have in this class. So, uh, for anyone who's ever writing any kind of code, whether it's in uh, web development or software programming or anything like that, you need some sort of, uh, of, uh, of a platform on which you can start writing code. Uh, for us, we'll be looking at some basic text editor, good for beginners and also good for more experienced programmers as well. Then we'll move on to the fundamentals of HTML, so we'll look at setting up our basic web page, guys, and what is required to start writing HTML uh, that's able to work in a modern browser. And then we'll look at the basics of CSS, and we'll cover all the same topics as for HTML, how we can start to affect our HTML elements and make them look differently, look better, look worse, whatever it is that you so desire. Then finally, guys, we'll have a look at some useful resources because with HTML and CSS, at the end of the day, you simply have to learn all the elements and all of the properties that you can affect in CSS uh, by just rote learning. So uh, the best way to do that is to have a look at the references that are available online. Uh, of course, because web development is online, uh, all of the resources and all of the documentation on it is also available online. So I'll point out, guys, the right direction to go in so that you can have a look and you'll have references if you ever need any additional information. Okay, before we start, uh, for your benefit, guys, don't try to download the software I'm talking about in this lesson. And also, don't try to code along with me during the lesson either. Uh, the reason I'm telling you guys not to do this is because it will distract you from the class and you might miss some important points. If you are watching the recording of this lesson, you are able to pause and rewind as necessary, so I recommend doing the download of your software and trying to code along uh, when you watch the recording of this lesson. Alright guys? Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll go straight into our first topic of the day, and that is the text editor. So, what exactly is a text editor? Well, it is a computer program that lets a user enter, change, and store text. So, this is distinct, guys, from something like Microsoft Word or OpenOffice uh, Word as well. Uh, those are uh, automatic markup uh, uh, programs, and this is not good for us because we want to write the most raw text possible, the kind of text that can be comprehended by a browser. So, what exactly do you need? Well, you need a text editor that's very good for this specific task. In this course, guys, I'm on Windows and I will be using Notepad++. Notepad++ is a very good text editor and it's also very beginner friendly, so if you are new to programming in general, I would highly, highly recommend Notepad++. On the other hand, guys, if you already have some experience with programming, well then I would recommend another program. Additionally, because Notepad++ is only available on Windows, if you're on either Mac OS X or if you're using a version of Linux, I would suggest Sublime Text instead. Uh, Sublime Text is actually my favorite text editor. Uh, however, because it doesn't have some specific functionality inbuilt that is in Notepad++, I'm going to stick to Notepad++ in this course. So, as I said, guys, you need to visit the website and download and install it. And again, guys, it's open source and absolutely free. So you don't need to worry about anything like that. Same is the case for most other text editors out there. Once you have downloaded Notepad++, you simply have to open Notepad++ and you'll see something that looks like this. So this is a basic text editor interface. So you can type really anything you like and say, hello world. Uh, so I'm just typing on my keyboard right now saying, hello world, and you can say, uh, tab out, and you can say, hello world, on a different line. Uh, I can just go ahead and pick out a couple of lucky students here and say, hi Div, uh, Divya, we've got hi uh, Conrad. You can really write anything you like and it will work just fine inside a text editor. You can also use numbers, one, two, three, four. You can use any symbols you like. Uh, and you can also use things like um, capital letters and anything that you could normally expect to see inside a browser, inside a regular document editor. Uh, all right, so that is how you can basically type into the interface. And you can delete things as well as normal. And you can see, guys, that Notepad++ has numbers on the left to show you which line you are writing on. I'm pressing the return key on my keyboard to enter a new line. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to set the language of Notepad++ 
to HTML. And by doing this, it means that Notepad++ will know that I'm writing HTML and it will add some nice formatting around the words I write to make my code more comprehensible. To change the language, you just simply go up to the language here and you go and highlight H, which stands for HTML, and then you can click HTML and suddenly Notepad++ is aware that I'm writing in HTML. To give you a demonstration, if I write a basic HTML tag, the HTML tag itself, and the closing HTML tag, you'll see that it's colored it in blue. And this means that it recognizes that this is a HTML tag. And if I highlight the HTML button, it will show which closing HTML tag it's connected to. So this will make your life a lot easier once you build more, pro more complicated uh, web applications. And it's very easy to get lost if you're inside 100 or 200 lines of code at any one time. Alternatively, guys, if you don't want to set the language, you can simply save the file as a .html file, which is what we're going to do now. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Save As. Now, because Notepad++ already knows that I'm trying to write in HTML, it's automatically saving it as type hypertext markup language, but even if you don't set the language before you save the file, you can simply use the .html file extension at the end, and it will automatically save it and recognize that we are now writing in HTML. So if I just navigate here to the web development folder and go to lesson two, and I'm simply going to save it inside here. I'm going to save my file as index.html. Index is the default name for a web page, so we're going to use that. More on that later. And I'm going to use the .html extension, and this means that both the computer and also Notepad++ will recognize that this is a HTML file. Very important, guys. We discussed it in lesson one. So if you've forgotten, this is what you need to save your file as. Okay, so now I've got my saved index.html file. Uh, what I can do now is I can write any kind of code I'd like inside here, and I can simply run it inside my browser. Uh, to run it as a shortcut in Notepad++, you can simply go up to the Run icon here, and select Launch in whichever uh, particular browser you want. I like to use Google Chrome when I'm web developing, because Google Chrome generally has all of the latest um, uh, updates to web application development. All the HTML5 and uh, CSS and things like that are always up to date on Chrome. Firefox is also a good alternative as well. So if I launch this in Chrome, guys, you'll see it's opened up a new browser window, and it's actually loaded my page. You can see index.html is the current title of my document. Of course, it's blank because I haven't written anything yet. However, the browser does recognize that it's a HTML file. Okay, so if I go back to Notepad++, and what I'm going to do now, guys, is quickly jump back to uh, my presentation so that we can uh, move on to writing our first HTML uh, element. <coughs> Quick note, guys, for those of you guys who will be using Sublime Text, you may not have this shortcut to run and launch in Chrome uh, right there available for you to use. This is the advantage of having Notepad++ as a default. However, it shouldn't be a problem, guys. All you need to do is load up your uh, file explorer, whatever that may be. So I'm going to drag mine over here. Go to this PC. Go to D drive. Uh, load up my web development folder. And open up my file, which is inside here. So you can see, guys, this says index.html. So what I can do is right-click it and say open with and I'm going to say Google Chrome, and it will also launch the file in Google Chrome. So if you're using Sublime Text, it's a little bit awkward because you're going to have to do that, but it's not that big a deal. So if you are on Mac or Linux, uh, you can add plugins to uh, much quicken your pace, but that's a topic for a later date. Okay, so that is the basic Notepad++ interface. So uh, we're now going to move on to HTML so that we can start writing some interesting things and actually create some uh, a decent web page. Uh, first things first, though, I want to redefine HTML so that you guys have an understanding of what it is. HTML, guys, it is the set of markup symbols inserted into a file that's intended for display on a browser page. So this means, of course, that we can logically mark up our content, and then the browser will understand that content and be able to display it accordingly. Quick question, guys, before we get started. What kind of information 
goes into the head of a document. So you won't be able to answer this now, probably, but by the end of this section, you should have an answer as to uh, what goes into the head of a document. So let's go back to Notepad++ and we can begin writing our first HTML document. So, go ahead and open this up. Alright guys, so as I mentioned before, because we are writing in HTML5, which is the latest version of HTML, I need to tell the browser that this is the case. So the first line, guys, of any HTML document you write in HTML5 is going to be the doc type declaration. To declare that you're writing in HTML5, all you need to go is go uh, opening angle bracket exclamation mark doc type HTML and then closing angled bracket. So any browser that reads this page will know that we're writing in HTML5. All right, so now I'm going to write out the rest of the HTML element in order to build a basic HTML page. Every HTML document, guys, is going to need a HTML element. And of course, to create one, we have to have a opening HTML tag and a closing HTML tag. So everything that goes inside these two tags will be part of the HTML document. The next thing I want to do, guys, is create the head of the document. Oops, the head of the document. So I've got an opening head and a closing head. And I'm also going to create the body of the document as well. So as you can see, guys, the head and the body both are inside the HTML element. So that means that the head and the body are part of the HTML element. This is called, so we're nesting HTML elements inside uh, other HTML elements. So I've got my head and my body nested inside my HTML document. All right, so now we've created the head and the body. The head, guys, is in charge of all the information about the document. Nothing that goes into the head is actually going to be displayed inside the browser window. Everything that's going to be displayed inside the browser window will go into the body of the HTML element. So let's get started with the head first. We're going to go ahead and write some stuff inside the head of the document. The most important thing really, I guess, uh, to go into the head is the title of our document so that we know exactly what this particular web page is supposed to do. Again, guys, I've nested the title inside my head, and the head is nested inside my HTML elements. This means the title is part of the head, and it's also part of the HTML element. The title of this page, I guess, is going to be a Welcome to Lesson 2. Or I'm just going to simply call it Lesson 2. Uh, and say Creating a Web Page, which is the title of this uh, particular class, so I guess that would be absolutely fine. Okay, so that means I've given my document a title now. And as you can see, what I've done is simply written inner HTML for the title HTML element. To show you guys the results of what I've done, I'm going to go ahead and run this and launch this in Chrome now. As you can see, there's still nothing inside the browser window because the title is not part of the body. However, it is part of the head, and as a result, it's displayed as the title of this tab, which means that the title of a HTML document will go into the tab, which is a good description of what this web page is supposed to be. Okay, so that is the basics of writing the head of our document. Other things can go into the head, too. Meta tags can go into the head, and also uh, any links to any CSS style sheets that we may have should also be going inside the head. Uh, but we will be working on that later on in the class when we talk about creating CSS for the first time. For now, what I'm going to do is write some text into the body so that you guys can see exactly what's going to happen here. So, first things first, I'm going to give it a heading one. So heading one is the main heading for a particular section. Uh, in this case, it's the main heading for the entire document. So what's this going to be? This is going to be welcome to lesson two. Exclamation mark. Additionally, guys, I'm going to write a paragraph and say, uh, hello to all the web development students. And then I'm going to close my paragraph. Again, guys, the heading one and the paragraph are nested inside the body. And then, of course, I've got welcome to lesson two as the inner HTML for my heading one. And then I've got this sentence here as the inner HTML for my paragraph. 
So if I go ahead and save this now, I can go ahead and refresh my page here, and you'll see that we've finally created our basic web page. We've got Welcome to Lesson 2 as a heading 1, and then we've got a little paragraph saying, Hello to all the web development students. Alright, so we created a basic document, but of course, that's very simple. We're going to go ahead and do something more interesting. Web pages, as you guys know, their job is to link to other web pages, other pages, so that you can navigate through the World Wide Web. How do we do that for ourselves, though? To create a hyperlink, which is a way of linking to another web page, we need to use what's known as an anchor tag. So let's go ahead and create an anchor tag now. This is going to be saying, this is a uh, hyperlink, hyperlink, and then I'm going to close my anchor tag here. So to declare an anchor tag, you use the letter A, and then you've got whatever the anchor tag is going to be called, and then you can close your anchor tag as well. However, guys, if I save this and refresh my page, you'll notice that it doesn't look like a hyperlink. It looks just like a paragraph. Does anyone know why it looks just like a paragraph? Very good stuff, guys. We didn't put in a reference. It may be a hyperlink, but it doesn't know where to go yet. So let's go ahead and add the hyperlink reference now. So, a hyperlink uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't actually go into the inner HTML. This is more information about the HTML element. To give a browser more information about a HTML element, we have to affect what is known as an attribute. In the case of an anchor tag, the anchor tag has an attribute called href, and this stands for hyperlink reference. So this is how we can designate the targeted web page that we want to go to. We can go href is equal to, and then inside quotation marks, we can simply link it to whatever web page we want. Uh, in my case, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, which means that we're going through the internet now, guys, rather than on our local computer. And then I'm going to go to www.google.com, which, of course, you guys should, most of you guys should recognize that this is the Google homepage. So if I save this and I refresh my page, you'll see that this is a hyperlink is suddenly underlined and it's blue because the browser knows that this hyperlink is supposed to go somewhere. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the hyperlink now. And as you can see, guys, we actually got redirected to the Google homepage, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. So we created our first hyperlink. All right, so that's all great. We've created an anchor tag. And uh, now we want to create more complicated structures. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go ahead and create a list. And by creating a list, what it means is that we can create a set of hyperlink references that are in an organized manner. But for now, what I'm going to do is leave the contents uh, above that uh, page there. And I'm simply going to go ahead and create an empty unordered list, and then we can fill it up as necessary. So there are two types of lists, guys. There are unordered lists and there are ordered lists. There is a minor difference between the two, and I'll show you exactly what that is in a moment. To create an unordered list, we simply use the UL HTML element. And then we can put in any items that we want inside this unordered list. To create a list item, we need another HTML element, and this is the LI. So for every item inside an unordered list, we need to use the LI HTML element inside of it. I'm simply going to go say lesson one, and then I'm going to copy paste this a few times, guys, so I can just create a little bit more code here. I'm going to go lesson two, lesson three, and lesson four. Let's go ahead and save this now and see what's happened on our web page. If I go back to the previous page here, you'll see that we've got lesson one through to four in bulleted points because the browser recognizes that this is an unordered list. Just to give you a quick demonstration of the difference between an unordered list and an ordered list, we simply have to change UL to OL to create an ordered list. And if I save this and refresh the page again, you'll see that suddenly these list items are numbered. It is a small semantic difference, but it can be important in the context of building a full-on web application. For now, though, because we're building a navigation bar, because we want these lessons to link to the appropriate pages, we're going to change this back to an unordered list for now. 
All right. Okay, that's great. We've got our four list items, but of course, as I mentioned, we want this to be a navigation bar. So we need these four lessons to actually link to another page. So we need these four lessons to be anchor tags themselves. So what we can do is inside the list item, we can declare that we're creating an anchor element by going A, and then we can close our anchor element at the end. Of course, as you already know, an anchor element needs a hyperlink reference. So I'm going to add the href attribute, and this is going to hyperlink to nowhere. I'm just simply going to use the hash symbol to link to nowhere. The hash symbol technically means the top of the document you're currently on, I guess, but uh, that's not going to affect us in this case. I'm going to copy paste this just a few times, guys, just to give you a demonstration of what this will look like if I've got four working anchor tags. And now I can remove this one because we don't need it anymore. And if I save this, guys, and refresh the page, you'll see that I've now got four bulleted hyperlinks to other pages. Of course, they don't go anywhere, as I mentioned, but uh, these are hyperlinks in their own right. You can set them to go to anywhere you like. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so that is sort of the basics, guys, of building a static web page. Uh, the last thing that we want to talk about is how you can organize your site logically. So how do we do that? Well, uh, you can use what's known as a grouping HTML element. Grouping HTML elements don't actually affect the HTML document in any way, but they do allow you to group content together in a logical manner. The most basic of these is the non-semantic HTML element, which is the div HTML element. So what I've done now, guys, is I've put Welcome to Lesson 2 and the paragraph that's there inside a div. If I save this and refresh the page, you'll notice that, oops, apart from zooming out, that absolutely nothing has happened. This H1 looks the exact same, and this paragraph also looks the exact same. And from a uh, browser interpretation point of view, nothing has happened either. All it means is that those two elements are now grouped together, which means that we'll be able to manipulate those two documents together if we want to, and so on and so forth. Of course, it doesn't make a lot of sense in context of uh, the basics yet, but you will see how we can have very useful functionality using divs later on when we get to start using Bootstrap, which is a CSS framework. For now, guys, I'm going to remove this div, and what I'm going to do instead is show you the different semantic HTML elements that are available. So the difference, guys, between non-semantic and semantic is that semantic describes the content inside it. This means that search engines like Google's search engine will be able to better understand your website. And this is great because the more comprehensible your website is, the more likely it is that you'll show up on the Google search results when somebody is looking for your site. So, for example, what kind of uh, semantic HTML elements are there? Well, the main three are the header, so I've got an opening and closing header, and then we've got main, which is the main contents of the document. We've got nav, which is the navigation bar inside your web page, and we've got footer, which is the footer for your document. So, as I said, guys, these HTML elements don't actually do anything in themselves except to describe and group the content that's inside of them. So, for example, I would like Welcome to Lesson 2 and Hello to all the web development students to be part of the header of my document. So this is, at the very top of the page, the first thing that any browser will see when they look at my web page. So I'm going to go ahead and move this header so that it encompasses both the heading 1 and the paragraph tags. If I go ahead and tabulate this out to keep things nice and organized, again, guys, we indent code to keep it comprehensible. We can see easily now that the heading 1 and the paragraph are all inside the header. To tabulate things, guys, you simply have to press the tab key, and to untabulate, you can remove the tabulation with a backspace. Uh, Notepad++ offers some very nice functionality to tab out multiple things at the same time. If you select multiple sentences and you press the tab key, it will simply tab 
all of the elements that you have selected instead of deleting them all and replacing them with a tab, which is what would happen in a more basic text editor like Notepad, which comes with Windows. Okay, so that is a quick note on indentation. Now, guys, what I'd like to do is move these um, semantic HTML elements to the appropriate places inside my document. First things first, we have our navigation. Well, we already have our unordered list here, so let's go ahead and put this unordered list inside our semantic HTML navigation. So let's go nav, and then we're going to have our closing nav here at the bottom. And then for uh, comprehensive, to make my code as easy to read as possible, I'm going to tab out the unordered list and everything inside of it. So we now know that everything is inside this navigation bar. Okay. So that is our navigation bar built, and then we're going to go ahead and move the main and the footer to below the navigation bar and the header, because we want the main contents of our document and also the footer at the end of the document to occur after the header and the navigation bar. I'm just going to quickly write a footer here, which is going to say, uh, it's going to have a paragraph, and it's going to say copyright at Shaw Academy. If I go ahead and save this and refresh the page, you'll see that we've got Copyright Shaw Academy has appeared at the bottom. Note, guys, that these semantic HTML elements have not actually changed the document in any way. Again, guys, these are simply a logical grouping so that uh, search engines like Google are better able to understand your document. At this point, guys, the content, as you guys might know, is a little bit senseless. So what I'm actually going to do here is copy-paste the, um, the contents that I've built before this class because it's all just written words to make to fill up our web page. At the end of the day, you can put whatever it is that you like inside, and then I'm going to go over it and explain all the different things that are inside of it. So one second, guys, while I copy-paste the contents of the main section of my um of my, uh, of my web page that I'm building. So as you can see, guys, I've got a section which is the final semantic HTML element that I want to talk about today. This means that we have logically grouped this section into a separate part of itself. Uh, sections can have their own heading ones as of HTML5, but you can see that I have two sections inside this HTML document. Uh, I'm also going to remove all the things that we haven't studied yet, so sorry about this, guys. Will I quickly remove all the HTML elements that we haven't quite gotten to yet? So we'll cover this later on in this class, so don't worry if you're interested in knowing what is going on here. Okay, and uh, looks like we're good, Jake. All right, so as you can see, guys, I've got heading one, I've got paragraphs, and this is all the same stuff you've seen before. I've just filled it out a little bit with a lot of words so that we actually have something on our web page to work with. So, guys, quick note, heading ones can only go inside sections or as what's inside the body of the document. So if you can't have two heading ones, inside uh, no sections. If you're going to have a section, you can have a heading one. This is a rule to follow or else Google's search engines or any other search engine will punish you for incorrectly building your website. I'm going to untab this because that should be untabbed just to keep things nice and neat. Uh, untab that as well. Uh, oops, sorry guys. Let me just go ahead and remove the tabulation here that shouldn't be there. All right. All right, so I'm just going to quickly refresh the page here so you can see exactly what is going on. So we've got introduction to web development, additional notes on HTML, we've got the language attribute, the meta tag, so just a lot of information organized in a logical manner. Just a quick note, I actually forgot to mention that we use the heading to HTML element for some of these. Uh, this is simply a way of saying that this is a subheading of the primary heading. Okay, this is all well and good, guys, and we've built our basic uh, HTML website. But, of course, it doesn't look very good. It just looks like a Word document, and that is not a very good thing. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and have a look at CSS so that we can make this uh, simple-looking website look very pretty very quickly. All right. So we're going to go back to our presentation briefly, and we're going to cover this question, guys. Does anyone remember? We covered it just there in the last section. What kind of information goes into the head of a HTML document? 
The header HTML element contains metadata about the document. Metadata, guys, is information about information. It's data about data. So this includes everything from the title uh, and the link to an external style sheet. Speaking of our link to an external style sheet, guys, we are now going to be talking about CSS, which is how we're going to connect this document uh, using a link. So, we're moving on to cascading style sheets now. And cascading style sheets, guys, as you learned it at the end of our lesson one class, it describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on a screen. So we had our basic HTML that, you, that you've seen now, and what we're going to do is we're going to make it look good in just a few moments. But before that, guys, I have a new question for you to answer. How does someone refer to a HTML element with an ID of example inside CSS? So you guys won't, shouldn't, probably won't know the answer to this question yet, but we will be covering it in the following a uh, few minutes. All right, so let's go back to our Notepad++, plus plus guys. Uh, so, when you're writing CSS, you have a few options. You can either write the CSS in line, which means that every single HTML element you can actually give a style to using the style attribute. So you can go style is equal to, and you can write CSS inside here. So you can do this for every HTML element inside your document, and this again, guys, is known as inline styling. Your second option is to use internal styling. So what that means is that inside the head of the document, you can create a style HTML element, and then you can write CSS in here. You can target HTML elements, and then you can affect their properties inside here. This is known as internal styling. The third option, and the option that we're going to use, is that you can create a separate document, a separate CSS file, and you can simply link it to this file using the link HTML element. We're going to use this, and the reason we're going to use this is because it makes code more modular. It means that you can reuse that CSS file for another page. It also makes it a lot easier for you to update your CSS if you need to. The more complicated your website gets, the more difficult inline styling becomes, and also internal styling can clutter your page, and that's never a good thing. If we can be organized, we should be, because uh, web applications get very complicated very quickly. Okay, so link, guys, is the first HTML element that we're looking at that does not need to be closed. This is actually technically incorrect. The reason for this is that the link HTML element doesn't actually contain any inner HTML. So we're going to get rid of our closing link, and we're simply going to write attributes inside the link tag. So the link tag is actually the entire HTML element of link. To link an external style sheet, guys, you need two attributes. You need the relationship attribute, and you also need the hyperlink reference attribute. So the rel attribute tells you what kind of file you're linking. For us, we're linking a style sheet, so we simply have to type style sheet inside here. For the href attribute, we need to name the file that we're looking to link. Uh, we're going to be linking a file on our local computer, so we don't need HTTP forward slash. Uh, we're simply going to name the file because it's also going to be in the same location as our index.html. I'm going to call it the style.css file, so this is what we need to put inside the hyperlink reference. So let's go ahead and create that style sheet now. To create a style sheet, guys, I'm going to press Control N, which is a shortcut on both Notepad++ and Sublime Text, to create a new document. I'm just going to write A in here, and then I'm going to press the Save button, go to File, and Save As, and I'm going to put it again in the same location as the index.html file, and I'm simply going to go and say style.css. Note, guys, that I didn't set the language of this file yet. However, once I save it as a .css file, Notepad++ will automatically realize that it's a CSS language file and adjust accordingly. So here we go.
go, we can already see that we've colour changed the letter A, and the reason for that is because A is a HTML element that can be targeted. Okay, so what are we going to do first? I want to demonstrate CSS before we do anything else. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to target all the heading ones in the document. So this heading one, this heading one, and this heading one. And I'm going to change their color to blue. So how do I do that? Well, first things first, I have to target HTML elements. To target a HTML element, I simply have to name the element that I wish to target. In this case, the heading one HTML element. After this, I have to write opening and closing curly brackets, and then inside the opening and closing curly brackets, or braces, I guess if is the more correct term, uh, I can write all of the properties and values that I want to set those properties to. There are a lot of them out there, guys, so we're just going to stick with the basics for now. We're going to go ahead and change the color of the text. To do that, we go color, which is a property, and then we go colon, and then we set it to a value. The value I'd like to set is the color blue, so I'm simply going to type the word blue there. So again, to go over this one more time, I've got the color of my uh, text, colon, and then the value, which is blue. Color is a property, and blue is the value. And then at the end of every uh, change that I make, I need to write a semicolon to let the browser know that I finished with that particular command. If I go ahead and save this style.css now, and I save this index.html, what I'm going to do is refresh the page with the F5 key. And you can see, guys, that all of my heading ones have changed to the color blue. And this is how you can very quickly start to affect a change to your document uh, without having to try very hard. Uh, let's have a quick look at the questions box to make sure everyone is happy so far. Can you replace the blue with your uh, hexagonal language? Yes, absolutely, guys. We can go ahead and use any kind of color code that we like. So for those of you guys with a web design background or a graphic design background, you'll be aware that there are different ways, ways you can state colors. You can state colors as RGB values. You can state colors as hex symbols. So you can go ahead and use the hex symbol like this. And if I go ahead and save this and refresh the page, we're suddenly using this very nice color, actually, uh, instead of blue. Uh, if you want to know more about hash, uh, hexa hexagonal, uh, uh, hexagonal colors, uh, codes, you should take the web design or the graphic design class. All right, so we've got our color of our heading one, but what if we want to do more things to the heading one? Well, we can go ahead and add another property value pair. To add another property value pair, I simply have to go onto a new line. You don't even have to technically, but we're going to change the background color now. We're going to go background color, colon, and we're going to go ahead and change it to the absolute color black. So if we save this, guys, and we refresh the page, you'll see suddenly that all of my heading ones have a background color of black. You guys can very quickly build a very nice looking website by just taking things one step at a time and building things in the way that you would like to. However, guys, we don't have the time to do all of this today. CSS is covered in a lot of detail in web design, so I only cover it enough so that you can understand what's going on. Uh, however, I would like to show you what, what the site would look like if I have a proper CSS page uh, uh, applied to my document. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is copy this style sheet that I've created, and I'm going to paste it inside here. So if I select everything and paste over it. Uh, I'm going to save this, but I'm going to quickly describe everything that's inside the document. Again, guys, this will be uploaded to your resources area, so you'll be able to have a look and access and play around with things for yourself. So I'm targeting the body, the header, and all of these other things, guys. And this is all the different property value pairs that you can have. There are even more than this, but I'll give you guys a reference website to have a look at all the possible property value pairs, if that's what you are interested in. This, guys, is something different. I've got dot blue here, and I will talk exactly about what that means in just a moment. I'm using the dot 
prefix before I state something because I'm trying to target what's known as a class. Additionally, if I want to target what's known as an ID, I would go ahead and use the pound sign. So I'm going to go pound sign unique, and then I'm going to go ahead and say color black. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and say color uh, green because we want to be able to see the effects of what we've done. So guys, this dot operator targets a class, and this pound sign targets an ID. But what exactly are these things? I briefly introduced you to them earlier on in the class, but guys, I'd like to now explain exactly what they are. Classes, they are a way of grouping similar elements that you'd like to apply the similar CSS or JavaScript effects to. To give you guys a quick example of that, we're going to go ahead and target some stuff to have the color blue applied to them and to them only. I'd like to go ahead and color this in a special blue color, and I'd also like to target, if I scroll, oops, sorry, I've scrolled down too far, I'd also like to target setting up a web server. I'd like to target these two things so that they stand out a little bit more. In order to target something, guys, we first of all have to give it a HTML element. So we're going to use the span element. The span element, guys, simply sections off a piece of writing so that you can actually target that element using classes or IDs or whatever else you'd like. I'm going to create a span for setting up a server as well. And then, guys, all I need to do is target those two elements with a new attribute called the class attribute. So classes, guys, again, are to logically group a set of elements that are supposed to have similar things applied to them. So again, I want to give it a class of blue, which, as you saw in my CSS file, would change their color to the color blue. So I go class equals to whatever the name of the class I choose is. This could be anything you'd like, guys. It doesn't have to be something that even makes sense if you don't want it to. I'm going to go ahead and save this and refresh the page now. And as you can see, all of my CSS has suddenly been applied to the document. I've got diploma in web development and setting up a web server has now been changed to the color blue. Additionally, I've targeted the header of my document, I've ta targeted my navigation bar, and I've targeted my footer with some different colors just so that you can build an organized web page quickly. I've also done some resizing on my H2, uh, uh, HTML elements and so on and so forth. I'm going to go back to the CSS file, guys, and I'm going to keep moving on so that I can talk a little bit about, uh, about exactly what I've done. I'll talk about the unique ID in just a moment. Okay, so we've got our navigation bar. I've changed the background color to this hex symbol. I've also given it more attributes to place it on the left-hand side to say how big that HTML element is and to give it a fixed height so that it extends all the way to the bottom of my web page. Additionally, guys, I've targeted the anchor tag to say I don't want the bullet points anymore. I've also changed the color and I've bolded the anchor elements as well so that they stand out a little bit more. This, guys, is a hover effect. So whenever I hover over my navigation bar, the color of my anchor tags will also change. So you can also target things to happen when, you, uh, when, you, when you're affecting them. Again, guys, if you're a bit confused about all the sudden inflow of information, don't worry because CSS is not covered in any detail really in this class. I just want to give you guys the opportunity to look at complicated CSS if that's what you'd like to do. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is the ID. So as I mentioned, a class is a way of selecting multiple HTML elements and grouping them together. If I want to target one element and one element only, what I can do is give it an ID. So let's say, for example, that I'd like to give this heading one a unique ID so that I can specifically change that HTML element and that HTML element only. I can give it an attribute of ID. And this particular ID is going to be unique because that's what I changed inside my CSS file. If I go back now and I refresh the page, you'll see that additionally
traditional notes on HTML has been overwritten with the color green. Quick note guys, in CSS generally you'll only be using classes, but in JavaScript, which we cover next Monday, we'll be using IDs almost exclusively. So IDs are very useful when you're trying to apply programming, whereas classes generally are more useful for CSS. Alright, and I guess that is it for this class. We're just going to go ahead and finish off with the presentation before we get into the Q&A. Guys, does anyone remember, how does someone refer to a HTML element with an ID of example? So let's say I had a HTML element and I set its ID to be equal to example. How would I target that if I'm writing CSS? So very good stuff, guys. You go hashtag and then the name of the ID. In this case, it is example. Uh, here we go. Very good, very good. All right, good stuff, guys. Uh, that's, that's great. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is some useful resources. This is just a short section just before we get to the Q&A. I uh, just want to talk about some things that you can use in order to make the web development side of things a little bit easier. If you're not a huge fan of writing CSS or HTML, what I highly suggest to you guys is that you simply go online and you can download any number of templates you like absolutely free. If you simply go into your Google search engine and type in free HTML templates, you'll get access to free web pages that were built by people who are uh, allowing you to download it. It's got a bunch of HTML and a bunch of CSS. So what we'll be able to do as web developers is play around and affect that code dynamically using JavaScript and PHP. Again, guys, our focus is on web development and not web design. Uh, so the web page templates are there in case you're not particularly comfortable with writing your own HTML or CSS or you don't have the uh, the desire to spend the time to learn all of the different HTML elements and CSS properties out there. Additionally, guys, as I mentioned, for those of you guys who are interested in HTML and CSS, you guys will want to start learning all the elements that there are out there. And guys, there are a lot of them. If you are interested in learning them, there are a couple of websites that I would recommend. The first I would recommend is w3.org. This is the World Wide Web Consortium website. So this is all the latest standards for how to build a website properly. If you ever want to be make sure that you're up to date in how you build a website, this is a great website to visit. The other option, guys, is if your questions aren't answered on the W3 website, you can go to stackoverflow.com. This is the website, guys, if you're a developer or a programmer and you have a question that you can't answer or find online, you can simply ask the question on stackoverflow.com and someone will be able to help you out. Uh, so stackoverflow.com, guys, if you're new to web development or programming, this is the website on the internet for anyone because you'll always get an answer to a question or you'll just find one that was already asked and answered on your behalf. The final website, guys, that isn't actually there is the Mozilla Developer Network, but we'll talk more about that once we get to covering JavaScript because it's more involved with that particular um, programming language. Okay, so our summary of the class, guys, we covered HTML, CSS, and the text editor that we wanted for both HTML and CSS. Finally, we finish up with a quick look at some resources you could use if you guys are stuck. We now have a basis, guys, on, on which we can build a web application. As I mentioned, HTML and CSS, they help you to build